Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. In this episode, we venture out to Bozeman, Montana to have the Overland Explorer Campex installed on the Four Expedition 2020 Ram 1500 Rebel. Join me on this epic adventure and be a part of this exciting new Overland build. The next episode of Four Expedition Adventure starts now. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I'm Scott Luthold. Today, I'm really excited to share with you that I've got a three-part episode of a really extraordinary adventure that I took from Arizona up to Bozeman, Montana with the 2020 Ram Rebel to have the Overland Explorer Campex slide-in camper installed. And then on the way back, I meandered around um, Yellowstone National Park, the Grand Tetons, um, down through parts of Wyoming uh, to Moab, Utah, Monument Valley, and back to Arizona. It's a really extraordinary trip. And uh, this is part one of that series. I really have to say this was an extraordinary adventure. I spent about 12 days solo, about nine days camping in the new Camp X. I had an opportunity to spend time in Yellowstone National Park right after they opened their doors. So I was able to spend almost the entire day there completely alone. I only saw a couple of people. That will be in part two of this series. In part three of this series, I did some extraordinary off-roading in Moab, Utah. In the first part of this series, which you'll watch now, really a, an incredible time camping around Bozeman, Montana and other places like that and you get to experience the install of this Camp X. If you haven't become a subscriber to the Forex Expedition channel, I encourage you to become one. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support Forex Expedition, go to forexpedition.com and go to the store. We have a lot of great products in there you can buy. Or if you'd like to become a member, go to patreon.com slash Expedition. Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. I really look forward to sharing all three of these episodes with you, so sit back and enjoy the ride. to do a lot of work on the computer before I got started and then I had to finish packing I packed most of my stuff that I needed but I had to go to my storage unit but my storage unit doesn't open until 8 o'clock so I had to wait for that to open then I had to go get a little uh, do a little grocery shopping so I could have some food along and um, and then once uh, oh and then I had to figure out how to take my tailgate off this new truck because um, they asked me to actually come up there with no tailgate and I didn't really want the tailgate on there anyway because I didn't want rocks and gravel kicking up on the paint side, which will be facing down at the ground. Anyway, uh, it's been a nice day today, really. It's been a pretty long drive. I took I-17 up to Flagstaff and then the 89 up into Utah. And then once I got into Utah, I passed by Bryce, Zion, National Parks, uh, Escalante Grand Staircase as well, and then eventually connected up to the 15, which is where I am right now. It's a really cool thing to be thinking to myself that I just gotta get up here and get my home installed on the back of my truck. Once that thing's installed, I'll have plenty of water, plenty of, plenty of propane. Um, I won't have solar panels installed yet. I do have solar panels that were just delivered today to my house that I'll install when I get back. But I do have my Rock Pals 330 watt power bank and 80 watt solar panel along. So I'll be able to have that kind of power. I'm going to a certified installer in Bozeman, Montana. And after that, I brought my laptop along. So I'll be able to work in the camper sitting at a table 
on my laptop for a couple hours a day if I need to. And I do have some work to do on Four Expedition. I have some work to do with Amy's company, Saren Center. And then I have a couple of clients that I picked up over the last couple of weeks in order to um, be able to uh, properly finance all of this stuff. Uh, I'm doing okay, but I'm not made of money. So it's uh, good just to go out and pick up some client work once in a while and take that on and uh, be able to uh, help finance some of this stuff. So All right, so I arrived in Ogden, Utah. I checked into a Holiday Inn Express. Um, I decided to drive a little further beyond Salt Lake City, which was already an eight or nine hour drive from Phoenix today. So I endured another maybe 50 miles and another, I don't know, 45 minutes of drive time. It's now about 11 p.m., so it's pretty late. But uh, I decided to avoid the rush hour traffic in the morning and get out of Salt Lake City. If I would have uh, stayed in a hotel south of the city, which is what I really wanted to do, I would have had to endure a lot of rush hour traffic. Salt Lake City and all of the surrounding cities, the suburbs, all the way south, um, American Fork, uh, Payson, all those, uh, Provo, all those communities all the way down the mountain range, all the way down the Wasatch Mountains, is a, just a really long, narrow city, and there's just ma one major freeway that connects all of that. And I would have had to drive through all that, and I didn't want to have to deal with that. So the girl at the front desk here told me that just outside of Ogden going north, the freeway jumps up to 80 miles an hour, and uh, there's no construction, and I'll probably have about a five and a half hour drive tomorrow. So that's not too bad. I'll get to um, Bozeman tomorrow, and then I'll check into a hotel and be able to get some work done on my computer, and then Friday morning I'll have the install done. Anyhow, I'm gonna jump in the shower now and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. All right, good morning, everybody. Let's do this, shall we? Put in about five hours of driving today and we'll be in Bozeman. Should be a great day. It's uh, looking beautiful out, very sunny out. Truck is looking totally filthy. But I got myself a little breakfast, a little cup of joe, and we're on our way. All right, so we arrived in Idaho Falls. I'm gonna stop by and talk to good friends, Chelsea and Mike over at CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Check in with them and just kind of spread some goodwill for Four Expedition with all of these great partners that I have. Boy, let me tell you, there are so many places that I want to stop right now. I've decided not to pull over and do much sightseeing as I'm going to do most of that once I get my camper. <clears throat> get the camper on the back and I'll be able to take all sorts of scenic byways on the way back down to Arizona and do a little camping along some of these amazing rivers and lakes. Maybe do a little paddle boarding. I did bring my paddle board. I'm currently just outside of Big Sky, Montana. And um, in this, on this part of the highway, on the way to Bozeman, I'm actually within the northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park. Boy, what a beautiful place. We finally arrived in Bozeman. Just passed by Big Sky RV. I think I'll probably go back and stop in there, say hello to those guys. Looks like a really nice little place. Might have to consider coming and spending a month here next summer.
rent a house here like I'm doing in Park City this summer. Gonna be heading over to uh, Big Sky RV this morning. Big Sky RV is the company that is certified in the United States right now to install the Overland Explorer Camp X. They're the only certified installer right now, which is why I had to drive to Bozeman, Montana, but I imagine that'll change soon. I'm pretty excited this morning. I think this is gonna be uh, somewhat life shifting. Maybe not life changing, but life shifting because uh, in some sense or another, I've been deliberating on something like this for years and years, as you all know, with the Sprinter 4x4 and now choosing to do the slide-in camper in the back of a pickup truck. All right, let's do this, huh? Awesome day today. Drove 15 hours for this. Can't wait for tonight to be able to... Um, actually use it out in the wilderness and do some camping. It'll be really exciting to take all of you along with me on that first venture with it. So one thing I really love is underdogs. I love working on projects that have to do with David and Goliath situations where there might be one or two other companies out there that have been doing it a long time. They're very popular, uh, but they don't have a lot of competition, so they don't have to really do much to improve their product or you know come out with new technologies and things like that and and when somebody comes to me and says they want to work on a project with me and they have that sort of situation it really kind of excites me and that's sort of the situation with overland explorer uh, they're a smaller company out of red deer alberta canada and they make a really great composite slide-in camper that has state-of-the-art technology and there aren't a lot of people in the slide-in camper uh, marketplace. There's a couple of companies that have um, overland or off-road capable slide-in campers, but they haven't updated their technology in a long time, and they don't. They haven't really had to. Why? Because they've got um, they've got people waiting in line to buy their product. They've got you know 27, 28 week wait times to get one of their products. And so when somebody comes to me and says, "I've got a better product, and I'd really like to have your help to." promote this product and get it into the marketplace, um, I take interest in that. I was one of the early Subaru Outback Overland vehicles. You know, Subarus have been used for off-roading for a long, long time, but the Outback really wasn't used as an Overland platform very much, and so because so, I, it garnered me a lot of media exposure for my Outback, and I was able to make some impact and headway into that vehicle as an Overland platform. And I'm doing the same thing with the Ram Rebel. The 1500 isn't really all that used as an overland platform. The 2500 is uh, quite a bit, actually. AEV's been doing uh, the Prospector for a long time. <clears throat> the Power Wagon is a great platform for overlanding as well. Real big trucks. But they're also a lot more expensive. And so what I like to do is work on projects where I feel like the everyman, I like to call it, where just average men and women can... Um, can use a vehicle that they can afford to create an overland platform. So I'm doing that with the Ram Rebel. I feel like I'm gonna garner quite a bit of exposure because of that. There we are in the new Camp X. It's gonna pop up the top for me. Have it installed here. All right, let's check out the inside here a little bit. So these are only here temporarily. You take these down when you're actually using the camper, but you put these on here so that when you lower the roof, um, the side tent uh, walls fold in nicely. These are really incredible here. This is a just a state-of-the-art locking system here. Really looking forward to having, having uh, such an easy way to put up and down this roof. Some nice booth style dinette seating. Got a Dometic refrigerator here. 
not very big, but it'll uh, suffice. A little bit of storage down here. Got a nice sink system here. One of the things I really like is that all the components are easily accessible right here. We got a red arc power system control. Got all your, uh, your instant hot and just really high quality plumbing in here. Got your furnace here. Got all your fuses. Everything's very accessible. Just a real high quality build. A place for a toilet. Pop this open here. And this slides out. And we can put a cassette toilet right here. Just spent a little bit of time talking to Donovan, the owner of Big Sky RV. He walked me around the Camp X and started telling me all the different uh, features and the, the big major differences between the Camp X and other brands out there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stick around Bozeman for the next couple of days and he and I are going to line back up and I want to do an interview with him so I can share with you a lot more details about what the major differences are between this new Camp X and other brands that have been on the market for a long time. All right, so these things come winterized, so we're dewinterizing it so I can actually use it. We're filling up the propane tanks. Just talked with this guy, Chad, for quite a while that lives here in Bozeman that actually has one of these installed and met him. Uh, my buddy Brian and I met him on Expedition Portal. He has a pretty amazing um, feed on Expedition Portal about these campers. So he was nice enough to come over here after work today and walk me through a whole bunch of different uh, settings on the, on the Red Arc and uh, all sorts of other things that he explained to me, error codes and things like that. All right, so while I'm waiting for my camper to be installed, I thought I'd walk around the lot a little bit and look what I just found. Oh yeah. Not sure who this belongs to. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this video right now thinking that is my dream machine right there. Who wouldn't want to own a couple hundred acres, have one of these babies on your lot, cruise around your property. Got some steelies on there. Boy, well, I tell you, it's been a long day. I can't believe um, there was a lot to the installation of this thing on my truck. And the guys over at Big Sky RV, I tell you, um, I came into it not knowing what was going to be involved in the installation. There was a little bit more to it than I thought. And I'm telling you, the people over at Big Sky RV turned out to be just really spectacular to work with. Everybody from the front desk person all the way through to... Um, RJ the installer and uh, Donovan who's the VP over there 
and uh, Wayne, the owner, everybody has been everybody's been very hospitable to me and uh, just very helpful. In fact, at the end of the day, once the camper was fully installed, several guys over in the service department stuck around and helped me pick out a couple of really cool places to go camp over the weekend because I decided to stay in uh, the Bozeman area until Monday. So uh, I'm heading out to a really beautiful spot. I'm telling you, it's like the hills are alive out here. It's just absolutely beautifully green. I'm just not used to seeing this much green because of the desert, living in the desert. But uh, they offered me up a couple of really good ideas and I'm gonna head out and as soon as I get there, I'll set up the, the camper and I'll share a little bit more about that with you. Oh my goodness, I have to tell you, I am so stoked right now. I found a spectacular camp spot up at a place called uh, Battle Ridge. And there's a campground up here, but the campground's closed. And across um, the meadow from the campground, there's an area that I was told by the RV guys was a place that you could boondock. So I came out here and there's some people camping out here, but holy cow, I came down this road that somebody told me was probably just an access road and that there weren't any camp spots. I took it anyway and I got to the bottom of it and there's no other camp spots here. The road dead ends right where I'm at. Just this phenomenal camping spot. I can see snow-capped peaks from my camper. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm telling you, the hills are alive in Montana. I feel like I'm in the Swiss Alps. I'm outside of Bozeman, Montana, and I'm telling you, I don't want to leave. <laughs> All right, so let's set up this new Campex, shall we? All right, so I'm pretty excited to be talking to you about this Teton Sports Mammoth two-person, zero-degree, queen-size sleeping bag. I received this sleeping bag a couple of months ago from Teton Sports, and uh, they were asking me if I would do a review of this product. But actually, I had, find out, I had found it difficult to find an application for this sleeping bag because it's so huge. And um, I was going to do a review on it at some point, but it turns out that this two-person queen-size sleeping bag is going to be ideal for inside this Camp X um, slide-in camper. There's a queen-size bed here that actually turns into a king, and because there's so much room on the side walls in the sleeping area, I'll be able to leave this entire sleeping bag up here, as well as pillows and other sleeping essentials, and maybe even some clothing. So this is the first time I'm gonna be using this Teton Sport sleeping bag, and I will be talking to you a little bit more about it as the weekend goes on. Wow, look at that. That queen size sleeping bag fits up there perfectly. Now, I'm a pretty short person. I'm only about 5'8", but this thing actually grows into a king size bed. And you can see that there's some rails right here. And this thing slides out this way. And then there's an extra mattress pad back there that drops down into the area when this pulls out and becomes a sleeper going front to back. But honestly, I'm never going to have to really do that because uh, my height and my partner's height, we're going to be able to sleep side to side in this thing all the time. And um, I'm telling you, having a full-time sleeping space that you never have to take down inside your camper is really awesome. And if you never have to take this stuff out of the vehicle and, and pack it away and then, um, you know, restock it into your vehicle when you're going to go camping and open it all back up, it saves an awful lot of time. All right, so we got everything all set up. Now I'm just gonna sit here and watch the sunset and maybe have a little drink. And uh, 
I bought a few things before I got here that I knew I was going to need. Um, some of it didn't arrive until after I left already, including my solar panels and all of that, which I thought maybe I would install while I was here because it's so hot in Arizona. I don't want to be um, installing something like that on the roof of my camper out there in the desert. But there were a few things here that uh, I thought might be a good idea to buy, so I bought those and I brought those along. I tell ya, I love my Subaru Outback and my rooftop tent. And I've had a lot of wonderful adventures with that vehicle and I plan on having a lot more adventures with that vehicle, but this is pretty nice. This sort of reminds me, um, we used to have, uh, when I was a kid, we used to have a Volkswagen Westfalia that had a pop-up camper top and my parents and my sister and I would all go camping in that. My parents would sleep in the back in the double bed my sister would sleep upstairs, and then there was a, basically a sling cot that laid over the front and pa front driver and passenger seats. That's where I slept as a kid. And I'm telling you, that little thing was that German engineering, you know, it's, um, it was very innovative at the time, and I, we just really loved that thing. We did a lot of family trips with that. And this kind of reminds me of that, except for the fact that I've got a beautiful, big, queen-size bed in this thing. I've got a really nice dinette that's more more or less um, uh, sort of like a booth that if I lower this table down and I get some pillows, I might, I might actually get a nice bunch of throw pillows. And um, if I'm not using this table, you can drop this table down and just fill that in with cushion and turn this all into just a really nice big sectional couch, which would be really cool. And then maybe I'll hang a little um, uh, iPad on the wall over here so we can watch some movies and things like that. It's just a much, much more comfortable, cozy, comfortable cabin space than sleeping in a rooftop tent. Don't get me wrong, I love sleeping in that rooftop tent and I love that kind of camping, uh, but this is definitely going to be a really great setup for a long-term uh, overland type trip to somewhere like the Arctic Circle or northern Canada or something like that. Well, all in all, it's been a great day. I'm up here in the queen-size sleeping area inside this awesome Teton Sport Mammoth sleeping bag. I think that's going to be really a great sleeping bag for up here. Um, had a nice dinner. The stove worked just fine. The uh, sink worked just fine. Um, I didn't run the hot water, but uh, and I'm also really not working the furnace tonight. It's not really warm enough. Um, this thing is insulated so well that I'm not sure if I'm going to need to use the heater all that often. But it's, uh, from what I understand, it's a really, um, a really powerful, efficient heater system. I think this is going to be pretty nice, and I feel like I'm going to be able to be comfortable in here at a lot of uh, lower temperatures, uh, to be honest. I think this thing is really well insulated. So, so far so good. I'm pretty excited about it, and as you can probably tell... <laughs> Uh, but uh, tomorrow we'll get up and we'll talk a little bit more. So until then, good night.
Wow, so I woke up this morning to the truck rocking back and forth. I thought maybe an animal had climbed up on the hood. And check this out. So sure enough, there are paw prints all over the hood of my truck. Fresh, wet, muddy paw prints. And they're pretty good size. Whatever it was, I don't know if it climbed up on the hood, but it definitely got up on its hind legs. And they're all over the side of the truck. Look at the smears. Wow, there's even a nose print here. If you can see that, yeah, there you go. There's a nose print here. My truck is just, look at this. Nose prints, paw prints. There's another paw print right on the window. You can see that, there you go. Well, isn't that an interesting way to wake up? Uh, it looks like it was going all the way around the truck. Trying to sniff around probably, smells food. Got on this side as well. Paw prints here on this side as well. I don't think he came around the back. I don't see anything in the back. But I was sleeping way up there. So I'm reading this free newspaper that I picked up called Explore Big Sky. Picked it up at the grocery store. And there's an article in here about a grizzly bear called Grizz 399, which is a famous grizzly bear that lives around Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And it's interesting because grizzly bears had disappeared from that area since the 1960s. But on May 18th, the same day Grand Teton National Park reopened this year, uh, Grizz 399 was spotted, and she had four cubs with her. And she's a pretty famous grizzly bear because she's uh, been spotted quite a bit in uh, the front range of the Grand Tetons. Um, but she's 24 years old, and she's managed to, managed to survive for nearly a quarter century navigating the highway and front country of Grand Teton, it says here. And it also says here that... Um, Grizzly bear mothers generally tend to raise no more than about two cubs a season, and she's got four, and she's 24 years old. Pretty incredible. But a uh, really interesting thing it says here further down the article, it says, but today grizzlies inhabit the Catch Creek drainage just east of the town of Jackson, Wyoming, and they are showing up in many places where they haven't been seen in a century. They are in the highlights south of Bozeman in both the Gatlin's and Madison's around Big Sky and even in Tobacco Roots. Now I'm north of Bozeman by probably about 30, 40 miles right now. But uh, you know, I had that bear experience this morning. Got out of my vehicle and saw those bear paw prints on uh, the sides and hood of my vehicle and snout marks on my window. Um, you know, who knows? It could have been a black bear, could have been a grizzly bear. 
sure would love to see one. It'd be awesome to be able to catch uh, some footage of a grizzly bear around my camp. You know, there's pros and cons to having grizzly bears in the area. You know, it'd be spectacular to see one. It'd be spectacular to catch some footage of one. It wouldn't be so spectacular to be caught outside, cornered by one. But, uh, you know, that's all part of living in, um, living and spending time in the wilderness. Sharing these wonderful spaces with wild animals. Wow, this article is really interesting. It goes on to say that early... Early in her life, 399 mauled a visitor who was attending a conference at Jackson Lake Lodge and who stumbled upon her and three cubs as they were dining on an elk, car on an elk carcass. The hiker survived, and the Grand Teton Park superintendent at the time, Mary Gibson Scott, decided the bear's actions, defending a carcass, fell under normal behavior. <clears throat> What's really interesting is this goes on to say that, thus, 399 and her cubs were spared. It proved smart on Scott's part, and lucky for the, those of us who enjoy watching her. Over 399's life, there are at least 22 bears, cubs, and cubs born to her cubs in her bloodline. Wow, 22 bears. It shows how important a single female grizzly can be to a population. Wow, that's just really incredible. This bear's 24 years old. In her bloodline, there are 22 other bears. Uh-huh. I thought I heard running water. Last night when I was sleeping, I could actually hear water running. I thought there must be a stream down here. Sure enough, look at this. Oh, how beautiful. What a truly spectacular place. I'm just not used to seeing it this green. Boy, I sure love Arizona and the canyons, beautiful Sonoran Desert, but I tell you what, this is just incredibly green. Nobody around. Looks like somebody at one time built a lean-to shelter here. Looks like it's been a while.
when you're on a road trip like this and you have no destination and no real plans, all of a sudden you see this awesome dirt road that turns off and you say, hmm, maybe I should check that out. So I asked a couple of guys that had some dirt bikes on the side of the road if there was some camping up on this road. And uh, they said, yeah, as long as you get past all the private property, it goes up into the National Forest. And here I am climbing this amazing road way up above the highway where I had intended I was going to camp. Well, we're up really high in elevation. Finally got to the public lands. Had to get through a lot of private property. And I just came past this really nice couple that was sitting up on top of the mountain. Had such an epic view, I had to ask him if he was going to propose to her. <laughs> Anyhow, if you guys are watching this, yo. All right, folks, so we found ourselves a spot. It's not really off the road at all. Boom. Here's the forest road right here. And here's my truck. But there really doesn't seem to be any people coming up here. This is pretty far back. But look at this. Out the back, I've got a view of all that snow-covered mountain peak terrain out there. Look at it drops way down into the valley down there. We gotta be somewhere close to 12,000 feet up here. I watched as I kept climbing at uh, looking across the valley at the other peaks that I camped below yesterday. And um, you know, yesterday I was looking up at those peaks. Well today, on this road, as I was coming up here, I was looking straight across at the top of those peaks. So I'm up pretty high. Well, with all that stuff I just bought now, I think I'm starting to get things organized. Looking pretty good. So those containers there, I should be able to go a whole second layer tall. And uh, over here I've got shirts and, you know, t-shirts and long sleeve shirts, underwear and socks. And then over here I've got shorts and pants. And right now over here I've just got my bathroom stuff and miscellaneous headlamps and things like that. And then my speaker over here, right now it's just sitting here on this ledge. And that ledge is generally used for making this bed into a king size bed. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mount that keeps it on the wall right there. So I'll have a stereo speaker mounted on the wall right there. And then um, this shelf, I actually uh, mounted it to the wall temporarily with some double sided tape. So now it doesn't go anywhere. I'll have to clear all this off, obviously, when I am traveling, because otherwise it's just gonna fly all over the place. And then right here, I've got a uh, pretty nice um, dustpan and, and little uh, brush to clean the floor. And then I'm hanging that on the wall with these little plastic wall hangers. And then I added another plastic wall hanger here for my hat. Right now I'm just keeping my hats up there. As far as this LED light's concerned, now I've got lighting that, you know, comes in this camper. There's LED lights on the ceiling, and I'm probably going to put some strip lighting all the way around the ceiling of this place, strip LED lighting. And then my brother had a really cool thing that he did with his eye camper underneath the, um, the platform of his, of his eye camper. He actually bought a couple of these, and he got these stick-on metal plates so that he could stick them underneath his eye camper um, platform. I'm going to do that on the ceiling here so I can mount a couple of these up here. And the reason I'm going to do that, even though I have light, is because I don't necessarily always want to be using the overhead light and burn down the battery. So if I can actually use my own LEDs once in a while, plus these lights here are white, and sometimes I want something softer, and uh, these actually have a white and a yellow setting, so I'll probably use those for more of an ambient light. 
and then when I do the uh, wraparound ceiling LEDs, those have multiple colors and those run off of a remote. So I'll probably have a nice soft auburn color for those as well. So this is coming together and the more I bring it together, the more I absolutely love it. So the more you watch my videos, the more you start to understand what my plans are. And for a long time, I've been wanting to buy some kind of a home on wheels that I can take to remote destinations through mud and through rocks and through whatever to get to some of the best camping spots. I mean, that's true overlanding. But uh, now that I've got this vehicle, and as most of you know, I was considering buying a Sprinter for a long time, and I've decided not to do that. I bought this instead. If you want to know why, I have a whole video that talks about why I bought this instead of a Sprinter. But now that I've got this, I am doing the next phase of my overall plan. And being right here in Bozeman, Montana is a big part of that sort of next phase. I decided a long time ago that I was going to buy some kind of a home on wheels. And then I was going to hop in that vehicle every summer and travel around to different towns in a variety of different states in the West that I've pinpointed on Google Maps and I've done a lot of research on to basically look for a piece of land somewhere between the neighborhood of um, 10 and 40 acres, depending on where it's located and what it butts up against. I, I'd be happy to do 10 acres if it was butted up against national forest land um, I prefer more than 20 acres, maybe 30 to 40 acres if possible, because I have a long-term goal of building um, my own cabin on there and building sort of a research and development facility on there and a place for people like you to all come visit for different kinds of workshops and whatnot. And I feel like I'm now on to that phase. I've driven through a lot of these valleys. I'm telling you, I've been to wonderful places so far including the Northern California coast, like Mendocino and Humboldt and up the coast there. I have found some really beautiful pieces of property up there that I've always really loved. I definitely love parts of Colorado, parts of Wyoming, parts of Utah, and definitely parts of Idaho and Montana. So here I am driving around and as I come in and out of cellular coverage, my partner Amy is actually sending me Zillow um, properties in this area. I mean, I tell her, man, I just absolutely love this valley here. See if you can find anything on Zillow. Now, I'm not necessarily in a position to go and buy right now, but I'm kind of getting a taste for certain regions. And I have to say, this region, the uh, greater Yellowstone region, is definitely at the top of my list, along with parts of Northern California so far. I have a feeling that other parts of Idaho, when I go visit parts of Idaho, I'll find some areas there that I find really attractive as well. But I'm just pretty excited that uh, I'm now 50 years old, I turned 51 in October, and I'm kind of in that position to where uh, the next phase of my life, to where I buy a piece of land, I take this truck and this camper to that piece of land, I unload the camper and I use that as a sort of a place to reside until I get my cabin built and I use the truck to haul supplies and lumber and things like that. I just feel like I'm on to the next phase and I'm really excited about it. And frankly, my partner Amy is also very excited about it. I think she feels like uh, my being up here in Montana and getting this camper has triggered sort of the next phase of my entire life plan. It's really in interesting to me to know if all of you have life plans. And if you don't, 
um, I can certainly help you with that. Uh, I've spoken at Overland Expo in the past talking about helping people create a life map and then basically looking at what the um, what they have that they're involved with that they uh, have passion for and kind of decide what direction to go and why they should go in that direction. So um, these are all things that I hope to be able to do on my property someday and um, I've got it all planned out. I've got a brand for that property. I've got a brand for a series of off-grid cabins that I like to buy and have available in different key places for people to tour that come from Europe and whatnot. I just got a lot of really great ideas and I really want to put those into uh, action and see them come to fruition. So I'm hoping that you all stick around um, and be subscribers to my channel and watch all of this unfold over the next couple of years. So beautiful. All right, everybody, I think that's a wrap for part one of this three-part adventure series. I really look forward to sharing part two and part three with you and hope you stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber to the Forest Edition channel, I really encourage you to become one. And of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support Forest Edition, go to forestpedition.com and go to the store. We have a lot of great products in there you can buy. And if you'd like to become a member, go to patreon.com slash Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. Until the next time, take care.